What is happening, people? It is Ryan Alter with NeverState.com, and welcome to the Side Gig Series Part 2, where I want to answer the question of how much money have I invested in this side business. Now, this is a much different experience than I had when I started my gym, Never State Athletics, just because I already owned some of the equipment that I was going to need. Since I produced my own firewood for the heat during the winter for my own house, I already had things like a cart to haul around the firewood. I have a Jeep that can pull the cart. I had some axes, some splitting malls, some felling wedges, some basic things that if I was just gonna produce for myself, then I probably wouldn't have upgraded uh, anything whatsoever. I actually did have a chainsaw prior to starting this firewood business. Uh, it is actually a steel MS-291, and it is a great saw, except it is a homeowner saw, and if you're gonna be producing the type of volume that I'm producing, you probably want something uh, that is a little bit better, something more on the pro level saw. So I did upgrade to a steel 500i, which is a really, really nice chainsaw, and I cannot say enough good things about it. I absolutely love that saw. And yes, having a pro level saw, although it does seem extravagant, made such a massive difference as far as production, performance, and speed just with all the cuts. Uh, to go along with that, I needed to buy some extra bars, some chains, uh, and I actually invested in some personal protection equipment with a helmet, some chaps, some basic things like that, so that uh, using a pro-level saw, it does have a good bit more power than my 291, so more things could potentially go wrong. And if they do, then I definitely want to protect myself because I would like to keep living. So just talking saw alone, depending on what bar and chain you decide to buy with the saw, uh, you're looking somewhere between like $1,300 and $1,500. And then you add on the personal protection equipment, the extra bars, the extra chains, the gas, the fuel, the oil, the, everything like that. I'm just going to round up and say that that section, protecting myself and having a nice saw just to begin, we're going to say that I spent about $3,000 total in that entire thing. Now that I had this nice professional saw, I needed something to cut. So uh, if you guys watched the last video, I do work with a tree company who takes down trees in people's yards, stuff like that, and the ones that can't be used for like milling or lumber or anything else, he brings to me because they're too knotty and too beat up, at which time I use them for firewood. So every single load that I buy from this tree company is $500 and each load carries about six cords if you don't know what a cord is it is a split up set of firewood just like what's behind me that is eight feet long four feet high and four feet wide so that block of wood is a cord and again each load that i get has about six cords to that load sometimes a little bit more sometimes a little bit less depending on the diameter of logs that he delivers uh but i have actually received five loads of wood now that I'm in the process of turning into actual firewood that can season and then sell. So now I find myself with this amazing saw as well as a ton of logs to cut up and I personally love splitting wood by hand. Still to this day I try to split wood almost every single day just for the exercise as well as kind of the moving meditation aspect of it. It's just so satisfying and amazing. I love splitting wood. However, if you're going to produce somewhere between 50 to 100 cords a year Hand splitting your wood is going to be quite the task. You're really not going to have much other time in your life other than just splitting wood. Um, so I knew at some point I was going to need to invest in a wood splitter. And I knew if I was going to produce like 50 to 100 cords a year, every single year for a couple years, I'm probably going to need something kind of on the lower level of like pro grade type of scale. So my dad and I went looking around for wood splitters trying to figure it out and these things range everywhere from like a thousand dollars for like a homeowner version all the way up to like 15,000 for like a real wood processing wood splitter and uh, with the wood not really making a ton of money I, I need to be real careful about what I invest the money in I need to be smart about these things. So my dad actually calls up a local company, uh, track supply company and asks if they have this one particular wood splitter in stock. It's a 40 ton wood splitter. It's right on like a low grade, gonna produce a lot of firewood type of scale, but it was uh, for $3,000. So my dad goes up to a uh, track supply company and asks them if they have this, they said they just sold out, but if you go up to another track supply company, they think they might have a deal. So my dad goes up and talks to these people and it turns out that they had two of the exact same splitter, except they were both labeled damaged because when the forklift was pulling the pallet off the truck or whatever I guess he took out some of the wheels before it was assembled and all this stuff anyway they totaled the entire pallet 
And so it was just sitting back in the yard of this tractor supply company. My dad talks to the guy, the guy says, hey, uh, I need to make room for spring stuff. Those, tri those two wood splitters are only two weeks old. So if you want them, uh, I will give them to you for $1,000 for both. And again, remember, each one of these wood splitters is $3,000 each. They're only two weeks old. They've just been labeled damaged because one doesn't have a set of wheels. So my dad and I go up and look at it. We look at it again. We look at it again. We're making sure we're not going to get like worked over on this deal. You know what I mean? Anyway, I end up buying two wood splitters for $1,000. Uh, $6,000 is what it should have been. It only came out to $1,000 and my dad and I put a little bit of work into them and now they both work perfectly fine. So uh, I ended up getting a whole lot of wood splitter for a very little bit of money. So that was a really cool thing that worked out. Uh, sometimes in business those things happen. A lot of times it doesn't, but every once in a while it does. So I was very, very thankful for that. So um, basically I've invested in the wood, a new saw as well as like protective equipment, uh, tools for the saw, the things that, that you need to to handle chainsaw stuff regularly. Um, and then these wood splitters, both of them for $1,000 uh, total, $1,000 total for both splitters. So uh, that's pretty much it. Now, I do wanna ask you guys' opinion for some other things. So I do have my Jeep, but my Jeep is not going to be able to uh, cart around a cord of firewood. And the cart that I currently have, uh, it takes five carts to make one cord. So uh, that's not really feasible either. So I know I'm either going to need some sort of small level dump truck or a truck plus a dump trailer. Now, if you guys are in this business or any type of business that involves dump trucks, dump trailers, things like that, please weigh in in the comment section down below and let me know what you what you think. Right now, I'm leaning towards a used dump truck, um, just something like a regular pickup truck that has a dump that could handle maybe a cord, maybe two cords, maybe, I don't know. Um, something like that. That is where my mind is leading because I don't currently have a truck and uh, I don't want to buy a truck as well as a dump trailer if I can get both in one thing. And then the second thing that I'm thinking about investing in that I need a lot of advice on because I don't know anything about it is a skid steer. So um, my property is on a hill uh, that is pretty much like this. It's like 60 degrees uh, the entire thing. There are two flats parts. One has my gym, one the other has my house. Other than that, it is all wooded and all just heading down to a river. So that being the case, uh, when trees do fall down, they're very, very tough to get back up the hill. So I'm looking for some sort of skid steer that can handle that. So it's probably going to need tracks. Wheels probably aren't going to work. Um, but I've actually seen recently mini skid steers where it's like basically half a skid steer. They're still plenty expensive, don't get me wrong, but could maybe fit between a lot of other trees and be really useful for a property like mine, as well as uh, just doing basic firewood stuff, tearing out stumps, things like that. So if you do have experience with things like skid steers or mini skid steers, or you have a better idea of something that, that might be a little bit um, more reasonable and economical for me, please let me know in the comments section down, before, down below because I'm just trying to learn this stuff and uh, I'm having a blast doing it, don't get me wrong, but I'm very, very ignorant when it comes to things like dump trucks and I, I don't know anything about machinery like that. So if you guys do have opinions or you guys have some advice for me, please leave it in the comments section down below. Guys, I thank you so much for all the support you guys do. The last video where I was talking about the side gig got like over 60,000 views, which I was expecting maybe like 2,000 views, I don't know. Uh, the bushcraft stuff, you guys have been watching that, as well as all the lifting stuff, of course. So guys, I just thank you so much for all the support. You guys supported me with this last Dark Horse program that's released. I am just overwhelmed, and I thank you guys so, so much. I do, uh, I will be catching you guys later in the week, hopefully with either some bushcraft or another lifting video, but until I do, go out something amazing, realize, keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. I hope you found this helpful and semi-entertaining. See you then.